Hello and welcome to the Manifest to Live Life Golden Show. This is episode 77. I'm flying by the seat of my pants today. I really feel strongly that I've got to get a show out about fear. I've had some interesting things happening on my own uh, side here that I want to share. And so I'm just going to I'm just going to fly today. I don't have any notes. I don't have an outline. I'm just I'm actually working through a bit of resistance. You know, we had a long weekend. We came off a of vacation. Uh, we've been doing a lot of things. We've been super busy. We've been living life to the fullest. So today's show is brought to you by someone who is doing it anyway, <laughs> doing it despite the resistance, doing it despite not really wanting to do it, just freaking doing it. So when it comes to fear, fear is your false evidence appearing real. And when we think about things, I had this realization yesterday. So yesterday we went to the beach super early. It's really freaking hot in California. So we decided we were going to go to the beach really early, set up and snorkel as soon as low tide hit. So we get down to the beach and it's this really small beach that uh, gets smaller as the tide gets higher. So we're sitting there and the waves are about six feet. So we're going to wait until, you know, the tide settles down. We kind of get up and we get in the water and we try to get in. And I'm just extremely intimidated by the ocean. I lived in the East Coast my whole life. And basically, we lived in Connecticut, which is on the Sound, so there's not a lot of waves. So I'm not real used to, you know, these really intense waves, and I haven't done enough to get myself over that fear. So I thought I did. You know, I told my husband the day before, you know, he said, I want to go snorkeling. Are you interested? And I said, I'm really just doing things. I'm being this yes girl. I'm just saying yes to life. I'm saying yes to living life to the fullest instead of holding myself back. And I shared in last the last episode how a lot of things in my life I would hold myself back. And not only would I create misery for myself, but I would create it for my husband because he doesn't want to do these things alone. He wants to do them with me. So I've never really been adventurous. And although I've done things, I've done a lot of things, I've followed my dreams, there are certain things that I'm fearful of that I won't go through with if I don't feel safe. So recognizing what those triggers are for you in your life and where your wounds may be, like where are the things that you need to do to, to be healed. So a couple of the triggers for me and what I recognize is when I don't feel safe, I'm not about it. When I'm not in control, I'm not about it. That's why I don't like to get drunk because I like to be in control. So being in the ocean and tossed about in the waves not a great feeling for me. So now most people would think to themselves, okay, then that's not something you should ever do. However, this is the difference between walking through your fears and your internal guidance that's actually telling you something that's not good for you, that you shouldn't do something. So this is the difference. This is what I decided. So we sat there all day. We had an amazing day yesterday. We got into the water a few times. I didn't get in very far. I kept moving backwards. My husband went in and swam a few times. The sets were really far back. So if you understand like wave sets and how the um, the break is, so basically where the break is, that's where the wave hits. The break was really far back. So in order to get into the water, you got to get past the break or you get slammed by a wave and pushed back in. So I got a little ways out and I was like, no, nope, I'm not going to do it. And I sat down and I, this is how I know that I needed to get through that. And it was because I was miserable about it. I was sad. I was disappointed in myself. I was upset that I wasn't able to get through that fear. And I watched a couple of people. So this is also what happens. So the day before I was on Facebook and I heard this late, this lady had put up a post about how she got swept into a rip and, you know, it was her, she had an issue because she didn't have fins on. If she had fins on, she would have been able to swim through it, but she ended up having to get rescued by lifeguards. And she grew up here, right? And she she said it was a rookie move not having fins. I don't have fins. So that was one thing that was on my mind. I watched lifeguards go in and assist people quite a few times and bring them back onto the beach. One girl in particular, she had asthma. She was sitting there afterwards with her inhaler. So, you know, maybe she's not a strong swimmer. I am a strong swimmer. I'm a good swimmer. I've been swimming my whole life. You know, I've never really been afraid of the water. Put me in a swimming pool. I have no problems. So um, so we didn't do it. 
And I definitely felt like, so I made a decision instead of, you know, going into the misery and feeling upset with myself, I decided I need more knowledge. So sometimes fear is a call for more knowledge, for more information. I need to go on YouTube. I need to look at videos of how to understand the ocean and where it's safe and what is a rip and how do I get myself to feel like I understand the ocean because I don't understand it. I mean, there's people body surfing. They have no problem. There's people surfing. There's surfers all the time with waves going over their head and they have no problem with it. And then where is my growing edge? Like where is my healing edge? So that part would be journaled out about why I feel unsafe. One of the major reasons that I feel unsafe and one of the major reasons that we feel fear is because we don't have enough information. The other reason that we have fear that conducts in our experience and we tend to not do things because of the fears is because we're always thinking about what we don't want. So when I look at the ocean and I think about going in it, I think I don't want to get hit by a wave and, you know, put under and have a bad experience. So I was constantly focusing on that because I was focusing on that. I was seeing a lot of people having that experience. Also, I saw a few people who got past the break, who were swimming around and having a delightful time. I saw a lot of elderly people get in, right? Having a good time, no problem at all. So instead of compiling the evidence that people were doing well, I compiled the evidence that they that there were people who were struggling. And so I put myself in that struggle category. I looked at the worst case scenario, and then I decided that for myself. And we do this all the time with our dreams, with our desires, with what we want to create. We make decisions around our fear, false evidence appearing real, and the focus and attention on what we don't want to happen. So when it comes to things like quitting your job, starting a new job, um, changing your where you live, the big things, the big life things, not just getting in the waves and swimming around, not you know the recreational stuff, but when it comes to the really big stuff, oftentimes our mind will talk us out of it to keep us safe and the same. Your mind loves to work on problems, so it will give you the problems to work on to make sure that you're going to stay safe in the the same. Unfortunately, those things that it gives to you usually talk you out of what you want to do. Oh, I'm fine here. Everything's okay here. I don't love my job, but geez, at least I have a job, you know, and then we justify. So it's, we give into the fears, we listen to what the mind says, and then we justify staying the same. Now, this is how you know if you're supposed to move forward, if you're supposed to actually do something. One thing is it will get worse. So it will get worse. We call that nails in the coffin. So what you're experiencing will get worse. Your job will get worse. Where you live will get worse. You know, for us in Connecticut, it was like one snow snowstorm after another, you know, losing electricity. I mean, all sorts of things that kept us going. We don't want to live here anymore. So those were the nails in the coffin for us. For you, if it's a job or if it's a new place that you want to live, it's paying attention to the energy field. What is the energy telling me? And I have to say at the end of the day yesterday, when my husband was giving me a little bit of like he was disappointed that we didn't actually get to do the snorkeling thing, he got over it. We ended up having a great day. We went bike riding and uh, left the beach because it was super hot. But when it came to that and I had some evidence of people going way out, I remember there was this younger, um, younger kids and the girl seemed really apprehensive and the boy like literally got her out and he had fins and she didn't and he got her out and they went way past the break and they were swimming around for a long time. And I thought, wow, she was fearful and she did it anyways. Like he wouldn't let her bail. Right. So I had evidence that I could have made it past the break. I saw some calm moments The thing that really tripped me up was just the uh, intensity, not just the intensity of these six foot waves, but the fact that they kept coming one right after another. So it was really hard to kind of get in between and swim underneath and do what I needed to do. So if it's if it's something big that you need to let go of and create that leap of faith, it's paying attention to the energy field to see where the energy is calling you next. So it will get worse. If you are intending to leave, you will get more miserable. You will continue to have this very strong call 
A lot of times it's like the middle of the night where you have this strong call and that's the call of the heart because when you're super relaxed, right? When you're in meditation, that's when, when you're sleeping, that's when your consciousness kind of like settles down and you're able to hear that underlying stuff. So if you continue to hear the same thing over and over again, that's your guidance saying, get out, do something different. You know, when you're getting ready to change a job or to change a location, there's a lot of unknowns and uncertainties. And those unknowns and uncertainties can definitely keep us stuck. They can keep us the same. Right before we left for California, we had no idea how we were going to make it happen. And we set an intention for a certain amount of money. So you've got to look at the field and you have to say, what do I need to accomplish this? Just like I did with the waves. What do I need to feel better about the ocean? I need to learn more. I need to understand more. I need to get, you know, get hip with the sets and, and the different things. Now it was a high tide day. So that wasn't my fault. Like low tide never really happened. And they shut rocks down and stuff. They had big signs up that people weren't allowed on the rocks, which was Our original intention was to go snorkeling off of the rocks, which would have been a lot easier to just hop into the water where it was calm. But that didn't happen yesterday because the ocean had its own agenda. So um, interestingly, when we do go out again, I have this information now about overcoming my fear and I'm going to be better prepared. I'm going to have more information. I'm going to do some studying. I'm going to do some research in order to equip myself better and have more knowledge. Knowledge is power. If you are looking to do something and you're scared to do it, arm yourself, get more, um, get more wisdom about it, get more knowledge about it, study about it, know your material, because that's going to help you in a job you're trying to change. It's going to help you in a location that you're trying to get. Before also, before we moved to California, we came here and scouted. I would never move anywhere that I didn't visit first. And I had visited here only for a second before. So knowing where we wanted to live and put down our little roots, that was important. And you can't not do that unless you go to the place and feel the energy and really feel feel where where you're going to belong. And we didn't have that for a few days. And we actually didn't connect with that until we moved here. But we had been all over the place and we knew the general area of where we wanted to be. And we landed here for sure. So in order to make these big leaps of faith, you need more information. So, you know, and if a job offer is coming And maybe it's not exactly what you want, but it promises some different energy. It promises some leading edge energy. Maybe it doesn't pay you as much as you want to. Maybe it's not in, you know, your greatest location. Maybe it doesn't check off every single box, but the potential for excitement is there and you're feeling the excitement and you're feeling really good about it. Then just trust, you know, there's a huge piece of this manifestation game I talked in a couple episodes ago about the spirituality of manifesting. There's the science and the spirituality. The science basically is the law. It's that, you know, what you think, what you believe in, what you send out is what you get back. The spirituality piece of this is the trust and the faith. It's about putting your best foot forward and trusting that what you are being called to is meant for you. And if something is taken away, there's something better coming. So trusting in that is massive. I had a friend recently who was going to change jobs and she was super excited about it. And she hadn't told her work yet, her, her original job yet. And that job fell apart and she was really disappointed and it took her a few days to get over it. But then she acknowledged the fact that when the writing was on the wall, this place was not going to take her to where she wanted to go. They basically were kind of crumbling this company. So thank God she didn't take it. Now, if she had taken it and it did crumble, there's always something better on the other side. This is the problem with fear. It keeps us from moving forward. And oftentimes when we move forward and things don't necessarily work out the way we thought, there is always something better coming. So the idea that we can't really screw things up because it's all about our expansion and growth is a really necessary part of spiritually manifesting. Because if you're stuck in this little box, what in the hell is the point? 
if you're just going to work and coming home and paying your bills, you don't have a lot of life force coming through you. You don't have you know, a lot of the enjoyment, a lot of the excitement, and a lot of the passion that could come from doing something different. Now, I'm not saying if you're happy in your job, you should quit your job and do something else. Absolutely not. If you're happy and you love your job, oh my goodness, stay with it. But if you have a desire to do something else, that is a calling. And that calling will continue to call you until you answer the call. Now, if you're in a position where you don't really know what you want to do and you continually keep yourself really safe by doing nothing, that's when people start to feel like they're stuck. And I always say you can't be stuck because we're always growing and evolving. What keeps us in this energy field of no movement, of no life force, is doing the same thing over and over again. And even more frustrating is expecting different results. So if you really want to push through that fear and do something different, my advice in the very beginning would be to research, to get yourself more knowledgeable, to see what really lights you up, to really feel the passion of, oh, you know, where could I go with this? Think outside the box. If what you're doing is not necessarily, you know, putting enough food on the table, because there's a lot of that going on, you know, what I've been hearing from other people is, you know, this idea that, you know, prices have gone up, but pay, but pay, pay schedules have not gone up. Pay, um, what you're getting paid is not going up. So there's that discrepancy, right? Well, abundance is part of the universe. So this is just a call for you to up level, a call for you to look for something different, a call for you to create more life force coming through you than initially there was. Nothing is to your demise. That's the, that's the problem with social programming and what's happening in our society is there's a belief out there that's very strong that says we are not free, that says we don't have any control, that we can be taken advantage of. And the problem with that is it's a powerless position. The good thing about that is it's a call and an invitation to release and heal that stuff. That's the good thing about it. If it's coming up, it's being asked to be released. So that's when you start journaling. That's when you start asking questions like, where did this powerlessness come from? How long have I felt this way? Where is this powerlessness showing up in my life? And how can I heal from it? And calling in your non-physical support team to help you release it and heal and become someone new. I love the idea of walking through life and saying yes. And just saying yes to the things that cause a little stir in me. Uh, one of the things I, I'm working on this uh, pretty enormous project right now. And one of the things I realized in the very beginning of it is that feeling of excitement and overwhelmment. And oftentimes we always label the overwhelmment as anxiety and it doesn't feel good, right? In the beginning, when we start projects, we get overwhelmed and we get anxious and it doesn't feel good and we want to let it go because we felt better when we weren't overwhelmed and anxious, right? But the truth is when we felt better, we really didn't feel better because we were in the misery and the lack of what we wanted. So the energy was slower, yes, but it wasn't really calling us to more. It wasn't really bringing out more of our personality, bringing out more of our self-confidence and our self-esteem. So in order for us to do that, we've got to start stepping out of the comfort zone, start living life to the fullest, start saying yes to things, get outside, do more activities, you know, get off the television, get off your phone. Good Lord. Our entire weekend was so jam packed with good stuff. Uh, we took a Duffy boat ride with a friend. It was her birthday, so we rented a Duffy boat for all the friends. We went out to dinner. Super blast. Then we went to the movies on Saturday, which our Sunday. Yeah, it was a long weekend, so we went to the movies. Um, movies? I'm, I'm having some issues with movies. We actually saw the movie Bullet Train, and it was funny. It was funny. However, uh, tons of blood and gore. And I noticed all of the different previews for movies. And I want you to keep this in mind. This is actually a really important, totally off-topic thing, but kind of on topic because it's about fear. Um, 
all the movies that were being brought out that are coming, the coming attractions, were full of fear and gore and just this yucky feeling, just this really massively yucky feeling. So as much as Bullet Train was kind of funny and it was entertaining, there was a side to it that really, it's it's not concerning because I can take myself out of it. I don't have to be a part of it. But it's good to bear in mind and keep in mind what is being fed to us, right? Is it fear? Is it drama? Um, We've noticed a lot of the TV shows that are coming out are full of drama. And a lot of the reasons for that is people are addicted to drama. They're addicted to feeling something. And if our lives are not full of life force, we're going to need to feel something from somewhere. So we're going to be attracted to those scarier movies. We're going to be attracted to those dramatic shows. So pay attention to that because what you're ingesting, what you're putting into your field, like I literally felt like my brain needed to be scrubbed after that. And I'm lucky that uh, I do have mind training in place. So my husband and I decided to not really talk about the movie and to just move forward. We, um, I don't know what we did after that. We must've gone to dinner. Yeah, I think we went out for dinner. We didn't talk about it at all. We didn't talk about it at all. So I just shut it down. I shut down those neural pathways that would have had me going into remembering all this gore. I mean, the gore. And it was just so gory. I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't get over it. I was like, do they really think people want to watch this? I had to keep shutting my eyes. I'm kind of sensitive anyways. Um, I have been known to actually kind of enjoy like crazy movies. But it was just, it. there's another level. Things have up-leveled um, in that field into a lower vibrational energy. So it's not an up-level. It's a, it's a downshift, actually. So, you know, this is what they're feeding society. So be careful, you know, protect your field. One of my mistakes is I didn't watch any of the previews. I just heard it was a good movie and I went to go see it. So there you go. It, you know, again, it was entertaining. It was something to do. But... In the long run, all of this stuff is putting us on a vibrational plane. Everything we do, everything we watch, everything we talk about is putting our, our ourselves on a station. And more of that stuff on that station is going to come to us. So be careful what you allow into your field. Definitely, without a doubt. All right. So fear is false evidence appearing real. It's also worst case scenario. It drives worst case scenario in your life and it puts you in a position of staying safe in the same when you allow your mind to talk you out of it. And how you know that your mind is talking you out of something is when you still have the desire, when you don't do it, but that desire continues to drive you crazy and continues to call to you every single day. Empower yourself. Get your knowledge together. Research. Prepare. If you're looking to create a new job, create a new career, you have to prepare. You have to prepare the energy field and tell the energy field that you're serious about it by doing your research, by looking into and coming up with ideas, thinking outside the box. You know, I will often usually with ideas, like when I have new programs that launch and things like that, like I'll just get an idea and I run with it. And I run so fast with it because I know my mind is about to talk me out of it. So I will literally throw up a post. You will very rarely see me throw up a post and not have anything to back it. Because if I threw up the post, then I am accountable to what I said I was going to do. So that's a really good indication that I'm going to follow the energy field by working with that initial idea. So if you have an idea, you got to run and you got to run fast. You got to run faster than the mind that's going to try to talk you out of it. And then if you're starting, if you're considering starting a new job and you're applying for jobs and things are coming to you, watch the energy field. Watch if that job is getting you excited. Watch, you know, the people that are involved with it. Really pay attention to what's happening to you and how you're feeling about it because that is going to lead you down the road of success. If it's hard, if you're feeling desperate, if you're feeling like the energy is really dense around it, you got to back up. You got to give it some space. 
when we allow, when we get into like receiving mode, which is basically quieting your mind, you know, meditating, taking that time to settle. And we don't keep trying to hit it so hard, but we just back up a little bit. My husband always says this, you got to back up a little bit, give it some space, see where the energy field calls to you next. That's going to give you your answers. You know, when I was, when I was contemplating this big project recently, this is, it's a big deal. This is a big project for me. And there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of uncertainties. And I could put in a lot of time and not really sure what I'm going to receive from that. So I looked at the energy field and I thought about all the things that I was doing, which was basically what I didn't want to happen. That's where I was going. That's where the fear is always going to drive you. And those are the initial thoughts that happen when you are presented with something that is right now beyond your capabilities and beyond where you've ever gone before. This is an up level. So up levels come with fear, right? a lot of uh, mind chatter. The mind's going to kick up. It's going to tell you all the reasons why you can't and you shouldn't, and it'll justify for you as well. And then it's moving forward or not moving forward based on what you decide from that moment. So if you decide, okay, I'm going to see where this goes and I'm going to decide that this is going to work out the best for me, that the expansion and growth that I'm going to receive from this is better than just staying safe in the same. And that's what I had to decide because, you know, for me, staying safe in the same is really not an option. It hasn't been an option for the last, I don't know, seven years of my life, like maybe more, maybe 10 years. Staying safe in the same just doesn't work for me anymore. And I think it's because of my mind training and also meditation. I got a really strong intuition on stuff. And if, you, if you've got a mind that's trying to talk you out of your intuition, you'll know by how you feel. And so if I feel like, okay, hang on a second, what am I doing? I'm looking at that ocean and I'm letting everything talk me out of doing what I really want to do. And every time I got in just a little bit, it would feel amazing because it was hot out and the water felt really good and the water temperature was really good. So that should have been my indication that it was going to be okay. I also didn't call on my angels. I call on angels for everything, for parking, for lost items. I call on angels literally for everything, for my kids, when my kids are leaving the house, when they're not home before I go to bed, when they're going through stuff, you know, when I, I just, I cover them in angels. I do it for my friends. I do it for everybody. And in that moment, my mind had me so distracted I forgot I could do that. I forgot I could call in my angels to keep me safe, to keep me um, protected from any kind of danger. I really did do that. Now, like, you know, bad things do happen. There's no doubt that bad things happen in our world, right? A lot of times I think what happens is people are super afraid. They do it anyway, but their fear was so overwhelming that they end up creating something and attracting something. Or that fear was really their inner guidance saying, you're not ready for this. That's possible too. We don't really know unless we have a really good, strong mind training practice and we're able to quiet our mind enough to create that space and then see how it feels. The potential of me not being ready yesterday and six foot waves was there. And one of my biggest thoughts, and this could have been my intuition was, if you, if you have a bad experience here, your snorkeling career is over. I'm not going to do it anymore if I have a really bad experience. So that could have been my inner guidance, right? Saying, this isn't the right water for you. These waves are over six feet. This is not something that you like to do. So I'm not beating myself up today by any means. I had a little bit yesterday where I felt some disappointment. But you know how I got over that? solution mode. I got in solution mode. I thought, you know what? That's not going to happen to me again. Next time I'm, you know, my husband said, next time we're going to look at the tides. We're going to make sure there's, you know, we're going to look at the schedule and we're going to see when the tide is super low, when there's like zero action going on, you know, tiny little waves. That'll make it so much easier to get out there and so much cooler. So I felt better because we had a plan. I felt better because I got in solution mode. I didn't allow myself to get bummed out because I let the fear win. I didn't let the fear win. I wasn't ready yet. 
How about that? I wasn't ready yet. Now that could be an excuse and you could ride that excuse into the sunset. I'm just not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. That's an excuse. You know, you, at some point you have to decide. At some point you have all your tools. You've got yourself prepared. You've studied. You've researched. Now it's time to move forward. And, you know, your ability to do that is based on how you, how strongly you can make that decision. I'm going to tell you what, the next time I go out there, it's happening. There's no doubt in my mind it's happening because we're going to be better prepared, right? I'm going to have some fins. We're ordering some fins for me. <laughs> so then I can feel pretty confident in that. <clears throat> so these are all things. And, you know, I don't have to snorkel. I don't know that I've ever really wanted to snorkel, but we did this thing in La Jolla and we bought the snorkeling gear and it's super cool and it was pretty awesome to like swim around and look. And I've seen people snorkeling and I thought it's cool. I could do that. I could totally do that. It's just another level. It's just another way of experiencing life. It's another way of experiencing really cool stuff instead of keeping ourselves in a little box where we're just living the same day after day. It's just, you know, get out, try new things, get out in nature, get out in the ocean, just get out of your house. That's a huge part of becoming more. So this is a super short show today. I may actually have a bonus edition show for you this week. So I'm going to keep this one short. Um, not having notes kind of helps with that. If you have questions, if you have things you're working on, please let me know um, at livelifegolden at gmail if you have questions, because I will address them on the show. I will put whatever you're experiencing, you know, we can do this anonymously and I will address it on the show if you have questions because I love what's coming through. I love sharing my life experience. I would love to share what you're experiencing with other people and I think it's a great way for us all to expand and grow together. So I will have a super cool guest, my next show. I'm really, really excited about it. It will also be a show about walking through your fears and living your life to the fullest. So that's why this one I'm going to keep short today. You know, it's like, I think about this often and how we have this one life, at least that we know of, right? This one life. And it's really easy for us to just go day to day and, you know, to, to just fill up our time and, you know, with work and busyness and paying the bills and all of that. And it's really easy to just let life go by really fast and to not take and decide what you want to do with it and just kind of give it away to other people, you know, the obligations and, and putting ourselves into pressure and the people pleasing and the, and the going to a job that we don't like, all of those things, it may feel easier to do than to not do them, right? It might be easier to just stay in your job for another 10, 15 years until you can retire. It may feel easier to do that. But if you have a call <clears throat> and you're not answering it, that creates misery, and so there's always, you know, there's always gifts and talents that we have that we, I believe, are brought here to share. And if we're not sharing them, that call of your heart is going to continue. And year after year, it's going to it's going to create some misery for you until you start to decide, how can I do this? You know, is there a way for me to do this? And is there a way for me to <clears throat> live my life fuller? Is there a way for me to experience more things? Is there a way for me to get out of this fear or just to walk through it so that I can become more? Because it's through those experiences that we actually become more. When we look at a situation and we decide, I'm going to move through this no matter how scary it is, no matter how overwhelmed I feel, I know that this was brought to me for a reason and because of that, I just have to move forward. I just have to take baby steps. We were laughing about this the other day, the saying of, <clears throat> and I forget what we were talking about, but it was, uh, you know, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And I think how we get ourselves in trouble with things is we try to figure out the end before we even begin. And you can't do that with stuff like this, like with the really big stuff, like the moves across the country or the new jobs. There's too much uncertainty 
And in that uncertainty, there is so much potential for us to think about the things that we don't want to happen. And it's a tendency, baby. It's a tendency that we have to do that. I mean, I am still doing it and I've been working on this for a really long time. So instead of working through that tendency of thinking about all the worst case scenarios, of thinking about all the terrible things that could happen, you could go over here and you could say, I have trust and I have faith. You can ask for signs. You can ask for synchronicities. You can ask for opportunities. You can ask. I know when it came to this project that I'm starting to do, I know that I tried to make big decisions around it before it was ready for any big decisions. It's still not really even big enough for any decisions to be made about it. It's just following the energy field now to see where it goes because we don't have enough information. Sometimes we don't have enough information. And if it's a big leap, like a job or a new place to live, you kind of have to get ready to get ready, right? So before we moved to California, I listened to the ocean waves. I meditated on that. I researched places. I looked at apartments. I looked at different areas. I just got my energy field ready. We came here and we got to see what people were doing for building, you know, for creating for um, creating homes and things like that to see if my husband could actually do what he does out here. And the answer was hell yes. So that was important. That was an important piece of information that we needed because if you're not prepared at all, you're going to find yourself in a much more overwhelming situation where it's harder to manifest. Make your manifestation game easier by preparing. What can I do right now to get ready? What can I do right now to give myself more information? What can I do right now to make myself more comfortable in the ocean? You know, I've even considered hiring someone to teach me about the ocean. <laughs> My husband's like, just start on YouTube. Like there, you can YouTube everything, right? So I'm going to start, you know, looking at that. Maybe I'll watch some shows, documentaries on the ocean. I don't know, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited to learn. I'm excited to grow and I'm excited to call more life force through me. I see way too many people who have no life force because they're just doing the same damn thing year after year, day after day, and they're not calling anything new through them. So if you really want to expand and grow, you've got to get out there and try new things, do new things, call yourself to new things, take on new skills, learn, um, get out in nature. I know I said that one like a million times. I'm doing my 9 km by 9 a.m. And no, I'm not doing five miles. That's what 9 km is. But Nigel Jones, he was on one of my episodes, my previous episodes. He is doing this thing where he's inspiring so many people. And his thing is like he's done five miles before nine o'clock in the morning for like 15 months. Like it's amazing. So he got me out in nature and I'm really excited about it. So I go after the gym and I do 30 minutes. That's it. That's all I'm calling myself to right now because that's what feels good because I've just done an hour workout. So 30 minutes of walking feels great. It's not the walking that's really what's jazzing me up. It's not the exercise. I'm not doing it for exercise. It's getting out in nature. I'm not listening to anything. I'm listening to the birds. I, today, I was like overwhelmed by the smells in the air and the temperature. So it's been really warm here in California, but where I walked was in the woods and there were all these changes in temperatures. Like it got chilly and then it got warm. And so I was just feeling the air on my skin and being super present. Man, is there a lot of gift in that. That's where life is at. Life is at the present moment. It's not trying to figure out the future. It's not regretting the past. It's not worrying about things. It's being super present with who you're with and allowing yourself to be in the moment, to really be in the moment, to enjoy things, to do things that you love, and to create a life that you don't need a vacation from. Live in an area that you don't need to vacation from. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm infatuated with where I live. And because of that, I enjoy so much of it. So if you don't live where you want to live, then start researching. Where would you want to live? What, what climate would suit you best right now in, in your life experience? Just because you grew up somewhere doesn't mean you have to stay there forever. Just because you have family there doesn't mean you have to stay there. I promise you that. This is your life. You get to decide. You get to decide where you work, where you live, what you do. And I know you may feel like that may not be true, but once you start activating energy, you will start seeing evidence 
of that movement forward and then things start to open up to you. They don't open up to you until you start to open up to them. So energy begets energy. Put some energy out there, start activating, and then notice what comes back because the energy field changes based on how you feel and how you respond to life and what you're doing in your own life. All right, you guys, super short show today, but um, that's all I have about fear. If you have questions, let me know. I love you all. Peace out.